Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Wednesday the 6th of June and this quick preview of the week beginning the 11th of June. And it's been a fairly mixed week for European equity markets thus far. Uh, I think on the top side it's being inhibited somewhat by concerns about um, the current trade talks that are going on between the US and China. There does appear to be some progress being made uh, between the US and China. However, EU and US trade talks appear to be stalled with neither party really wanting to back down from their entrenched positions. And I think that's really um, going to be an ongoing concern over the course of the next few days and potentially the next two to three weeks as well. Now, last week I looked at Euro dollar in the context of a payrolls report that at the time I did not have sight of, but which by and large was a fairly positive report, even though wage growth continues to come in slightly on the low side. On the flip side of that, we have uh, the euro, which is being weighed down by concerns about political uncertainty in Italy. Certainly, we do now have an Italian government, but ultimately, I think they seem quite intent on implementing the populist policies that um, they flagged up in their manifesto, and that's likely to bring them into serious conflict with EU fiscal and budget rules and really I think how Brussels pushes back against those new measures could well determine what happens to the euro going forward. Certainly we're seeing the pressure being taken up with respect to Italian borrowing costs where they are heading back up again after settling down initially after some sharp spikes higher. Certainly the effect on euro dollar it doesn't appear to be having a significant downward effect but certainly um, in the context of overall long-term direction I think there is certainly potential for the euro dollar to go lower but in the short term we could see it move back to around about 119 20 119 30 last week I talked about um, the euro dollar and the bullish engulfing candle that we have on this particular chart here and the potential for a move back to 11770 we've got that already um, over the course of the last two to three days I think there is potential for that to go even higher back to around about 118.30 and potentially even towards the 119.20 uh, and, and the 120 area but I think it's going to be very very difficult for the euro dollar to go significantly higher than that um, given that we look to be forming a bit of a death cross on the daily chart and we have a similar golden cross on the dollar index so we can see from the dollar index and we can see from the euro dollar that there is potential for further dollar strength going forward we could see a little bit of a pullback towards 93 on the dollar index but if this plays out as the long-term directional indicator that it normally would do then the likelihood is that we could well see further dollar gains going forward and in that context, I think it's important to look at what we've got on the agenda this coming week. We've got the Fed meeting on the 13th of January, um, and the likelihood is there that we're going to see an increase in interest rates. That is not going to be a surprise. It's largely priced in. What will be closely scrutinised is the forward guidance that Fed officials give to the market with respect to whether or not we can expect one or two extra rate rises this year. More importantly, we've also got the ECB rate meeting the day after, on the 14th of January, J January, June. On the 14th of June, and again here, forward guidance will be key, given comments um, by Jens Weidmann and Peter Pret that they expect inflation expectations to start hedging higher again, and that they will be and these are reports that they will be discussing the end of the asset purchase program, which is going to be unfortunate timing for Italy, given the fact that borrowing costs in Italy are edging back up towards the highs that we saw in late May. Now, people are getting a little bit excited about the fact that Italian borrowing costs are heading back towards 3%, and certainly that is much higher than what we've been used to in recent months. But if you go back prior to 2008, Italian 10-year yields were trending at around 4%. So Italy can sustain borrowing costs at around 4%. Might start to get a little bit worried if they go significantly beyond that for any length of time, but certainly at 3% in terms of the 10-year yield, it's eminently manageable in the short term. 
Um, but of course, a lot will also depend on how the ECB um, buys Italian bonds and how it pumps liquidity into the Italian banking system if they insist on not following EU fiscal rules. So a big week for the Fed. It's a big week for the ECB. It's also a big for the UK. It's also a big week for the UK economy. We have UK wages. We have UK unemployment, and we have UK CPI on the 12th and the 13th of July. Now, the Bank of England downgraded their inflation forecasts for this year um, to 2.5%. Personally, I think they're a little bit unwise to do that. I think given what we've seen with respect to oil prices, inflation could prove to be an awful lot stickier than I think the Bank of England is expecting. And certainly, I think in terms of the jump that we saw in EU inflation last month from 1.2 to 1.9, which went from the lowest of the year to the highest of the year, then the 2.5% UK CPI, not 2.4% UK CPI number, there is a distinct possibility that number could edge up. What I'm particularly interested in is the wages numbers. Can we sustain that 2.9% that we saw in the previous month's numbers? If we can, that should be broadly supportive of sterling, always assuming that there aren't any Brexit surprises. We've also got Chinese industrial production, Chinese retail sales for May. Recent May PMI data does appear to show that the Chinese economy is bouncing back a little bit. Retail sales have been a little bit soft. That is a worry. Looking to see that bounce back. Also looking to see whether or not fixed asset investment bounces back after coming in at its lowest level since 1999 in April. Last but by no means least, we've also got the North Korea US summit in Singapore. That could introduce a significant amount of noise to equity markets going forward. So quite a few items to keep an eye out for this week. Federal Reserve, European Central Bank, UK data, China data and the North Korea South Korea US summit as well as obviously ongoing discussions about trade. That's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.